Ho, ho, everyone. It's beginning to look like my favourite time of year. And what better way to get into the spirit than to read a story about Christmas? So, today we'll be reading Forgotten Christmas by Ash Gilpin. A story about a time when Christmas had been forgotten. That is, until three best of friends set off on an adventure of a lifetime and discover its true meaning. And without further ado, sit back and relax. Rest your head, your nose and your toes. Open your eyes and open your ears. Put on a smile and enjoy the show. Imagine for a moment a time without holiday cheer. No carolers or gifts to ring in the new year. A time to be with kith and kin. Forgotten those days of kindred celebration. It wasn't until a cold December day, when three best of friends got together to play. They happened upon an old broken down shack. Remains of a secret still kept intact. It was as if they had walked into another time, back when carolers sang and jingle bells chimed. A spectacle of lights and decorations filled the room, eggnog and candy canes left out to consume. Earmuff to earmuff, they stood wide in wonder, frozen in speech from the spell they were under. It was there they decided to make a pact, to do whatever they could, to bring this holiday back. But before they could set out on such an endeavour, they had to know whoever, whatever, ended this holiday forever. And who better to ask than old Mrs. Marley? She was, after all, the wisest by and largely. Together, they rode to her house on the shore. They walked up her front steps and knocked on the door. What do you want? A raspy voice came roaring. We need to know about Christmas, they replied, hearts all imploring. Without further ado, the door promptly came open. Hurry, come inside, it's freezing, you must be frozen. Now, how did you hear of this holiday name? It was Timmy, he did it, he's the one to blame. Now gather round, come closer, I have for you a story about a little boy named Willie and his unwavering desire for glory. Christmas was, indeed, Willie's favourite time of year. He'd set out milk and cookies and wait for the sound of eight tiny reindeer. He wanted nothing more than to be an elf in Santa's shop, to laugh and dance and make toys all day while drinking Santa's pop. Each year he'd write a letter to Big Red himself, about the ideas he had for Christmas and why he should be an elf. But each year the response came back the same. We thank you for your interest, please try back again. As you can imagine, this rocked Willie to his core. Willie threw away the letters, he wanted so much more. I'll go up to the North Pole and take one of Santa's trees. He'll never know it's missing, I'll return it before he leaves. I'll use its magical powers to make gifts for girls and boys. I'll prove myself to Santa with my inventions of mechanized toys. But Willie's plan had a folly for which he was soon to become aware. Taking that tree from Santa Claus had repercussions he couldn't bear. For little did he know, he broke the source of all its power. The absence of its siblings left it wilted like a flower. But this was just the start of an event like no other. The other trees in Christmasland began to wilt like one another. Without the magic of the trees to give power to Santa's shop, Christmas as we knew it came halting to a stop. What have I done? Willie thought to himself. I've ruined Christmas for everyone. I'm not worthy to be an elf. And so Willie, in all his disgrace and shame, 
ran away forever until time forgot his name. Winters came and went and Christmas soon was lost. The fleeting memories of joyous times melted away like winter's frost. Now, it's been said that the return of the tree would undo what's been done. But until that day reveals itself, there'll be no Christmas for you, for me, for anyone. So where do we go? What do we do? How do we make this oppression end? Search your feelings, you know the answer. Just look to your friend. She's right, you know. Yes, of course. The answer is right in front of us. We'll find the tree that Willie took and return it to St. Nicholas. So they set off on a mission to find Santa's missing tree. Days and weeks and months went by before they stumbled upon what just might be. A letter, a clue from Willie addressed to Santa Claus himself. I'm sorry I stole your Christmas tree. I'll never be able to forgive myself. But this letter postmarked to Santa was stamped return to sender. If only Santa had received this note, imagine all that he could render. The return address on the envelope gave the boys much needed direction. It led them back to the shack where they first found purpose and introspection. Returning to the shack, you see, had resulted in more than they had expected. For what at first had gone undetected, the moonlight's glow now projected. Could it be? I think it could. The man who entered Christmas. Yes, of course, I'm sure it is. That's Willie there in the distance. The boys confronted Willie and explained their very plight about the tree he took from Santa, leaving Christmas without light. Yes, I know, I've let you down. I've brought such joyous things to end. One could tell right away what Willie needed was a friend. But Willie, what you don't know about that letter you sent up north, it got marked return to sender and got lost in the back and forth. You mean Santa never read my letter? He never knew of my regret? That's exactly what we're saying and why it's so important we correct. Come with me, my new friends, and I'll take you to the tree. The one I took all those years ago when I was so young and naive. And so they followed Willie down a dark and winding trail until they came upon a sight of sights they had finally reached their grail. It was just as Mrs. Marley described it a tree so frail and weak. Perhaps if we just put it in water, Timmy murmured, tongue in cheek. But this was not a time for joking. Time was of the essence. Let's get this tree back to Santa so he can return to making presents. And so they traveled for many a day back to where it had all started. Back to Santa's shop in Christmasland, its location left uncharted. But what they had returned to with their mission so absolute was a land time had forgotten, one also cold and destitute. Willie's eyes began to water, seeing all that he had caused. Hang in there, buddy, we're almost there, Timmy shouted as Willie paused. Coming in hot, their sleigh malfunctioned and into Santa's shop it struck. There he is, I see him, here I go now, wish me luck. Hello, Santa, Willie here. I'm the one who took your tree. All those many years ago when I was foolish and naive. Willie, my boy, ho, 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 I know you've harbored such regret. Christmas is a time for peace on earth, goodwill toward men, a time to forgive and forget. So all those years of Willie's fear of how Santa would react, the true meaning of Christmas, no act could detract. Together, they planted that fated tree, restoring magic, power, and light. And to all the children of the world, Merry Christmas and good night. I'm so happy they were able to find Santa's tree and return it to Christmas land. I know Willie was happy too. Sometimes we do silly things not thinking of how it may affect others, but it's important you always make right. Until next time, my young storytimers, this is Mr. Whiskers saying meow and good night.
Hello everyone, Mr. Whiskers here. Enjoying our story times? Be sure to subscribe to our channel and never miss a story. And tell your friends so they can join in the fun. Goodbye for meow.